Hi, this is Savio. I've been seeking answers to some of life's most perplexing questions my entire life. In 2014, I was diagnosed with stage 3 cancer. And ever since, I realized my calling existed outside of what I knew to be familiar. This podcast is home for survivors like myself and those who yearn to build resilience in their mindset and live their best life. In Season 3, the show includes a mix of coaching sessions followed by interviews with those from all walks of life who have been successful in the wellness, business, media, and travel industries. The intent is to show the human experience in its rawest form so that others may glean insight. Nothing is rehearsed. As a board-certified wellness coach, number one best-selling author, and syndicated columnist, My job is to ask the deep questions of those trying to make sense of their place in this fractured world. I believe life speaks to us in different ways. Many of us listen, but don't know how or where to begin. As someone who has crossed the bridge between life and death, I say simply, begin where you are now and get busy living. If you liked today's episode, I would appreciate it if you could share it. Be sure to tag me at The Human Resolve so I can reciprocate in kind. So without further ado, welcome to The Human Resolve Podcast. Today's podcast guest is medical tattoo specialist and breast cancer survivor, Carmelina Bacati. As Carmelina states, I wish I heard, I see you, I hear you. You mean so much to me. You're important. I forgave my parents a long time ago because they did the best they could, just like every parent. The first thing I say to a cancer patient that comes and speaks to me when they've been first diagnosed is, forgive your past and heal any resentments that you have. Hi, Carmelina. Good to see you. Hi, Savio. Great to see you and have a nice chat with you today. Yes. I'm excited. So what would you like coaching on? Savvy, what is your intuition telling you right now? Let's flow. What, what do you want to coach me on? Uh, you know, what's happening in your life that's a pain point for you or that you feel is not where it needs to be? I think sometimes falling back in old patterns and habits, I'm being conscious of that. So maybe that, but basically... For sure, I want to kind of speak um, how disease health is or past traumas, things you don't heal kind of come up in your life. And my journey, I'm not going to talk for everybody, but my personal journey and what I personally do that helped me. Okay. So what I'm hearing is the idea of sort of getting back into old patterns and then sometimes slipping like my thoughts, but pretty much I'm good, but just being aware of that. So slipping between the thoughts of patterns and then also this idea of health and wellness and what that means to your life. Being Correct? triggered by maybe past traumas, childhood stuff, but not even realizing it. Okay. So what would be a really good outcome for today? A good outcome for me today is basically I want to spread and inspire anyone if I can um, touch anybody through this podcast, because I feel like that's why I'm here. Um, especially being diagnosed with cancer and having cancer um, six years ago, because it's gone. It's not with me. I always say it's gone. Um, Anything I could touch on, help somebody kind of um, grow, take something from this today and use it, apply it to their life. So really out of this conversation, some level of growth for others, and then also for yourself and and the Mm -hmm. fact that you've been through something as traumatic as cancer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, What was the cancer journey like for you? The cancer journey for me, um, I was diagnosed six years ago. I'm six years out. They say your 10 year mark is where it's gone, but I'm positive and I just look forward. And sometimes fear comes in, but I push it out because it scares the shit out of me. Um, My cancer journey was super... I'm going to say it wasn't easy, but I handled it better than some would because I was already on a healing path. Um, I was already on that path of healing before I got cancer. So I think that's why I handled it a lot better than others would or 
maybe um, someone that's just been diagnosed. I always talk to people that say, oh, I know a friend that's been diagnosed, a sister. I'm always open to talk to them. But I feel it's because of my own healing that started probably a couple of years before I was diagnosed. When the healing took place in your life, was there any areas that you found that were lacking? Yes. Um, Self, I know this is cliche, self-love, self-care. I did all these healings. I I, uh, started doing yoga in 2011, 12. I even did my training in Costa Rica just for the therapy part of it. Maybe not so much to teach it, but this one training was amazing because it was looking at yourself in the mirror and going back to your childhood. But I didn't realize that you can do this work, but it doesn't mean it's gone. And you're never fixed. You're just cautious, more aware, uh, more calm of how you deal and how you look at something. So I feel intuitively, because I think we all, if we listen, we know where things come from. And I feel my cancer diagnosis was from emotional stress or how to handle things or old pain or open wounds that I never healed as a child and as in my adult years. And I'm every day I'm healing because until I'm in my hundreds, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm going to always be learning. So I'm, I'm, I feel like it's an ongoing journey and it's not being fixed and we're all perfectly imperfect. Mm-hmm. And that's what I believe in. This mirror work that you did, what did you see or experience? I didn't realize that um, I come from a big family. I'm the second of six brothers and sisters and uh, my parents are amazing. You know, they had their chaos uh, between fine line and fine line between a fine line and love and hate. So I had an interesting childhood, a lot of back and forth, uh, so many schools, um, their chaotic uh, relationship together. But do I, would I, it's made me who I am. Like I am very emotionally intelligent from others, feelings, perspectives. I was always, um, I could feel people's pain and see it. I always kind of, just because of my upbringing, but I feel like, um, and I didn't know this, but my mom had, you know, so many kids. I I wasn't, I didn't feel like, um, I feel like my childhood was a little bit not Rob for me, but I feel like I grew up a bit too quick. So I wasn't seen. So in my adult years, I was picking emotionally unavailable relationships. So through that, it's great because in my relationships, it helped me, they were my best teachers, to look and love me better because they're not my source. I'm my source or God. So yeah, so everything that happens to us, I feel, is a gift. So some people be like, oh no, it's crazy. But if you sit in victim... Um, I'm not going to sit here and talk about, oh, this happened, this. Yeah, there's situations and stuff that, you know, I was out of my house at a young age. Um, I'm super close to my brothers and sisters. We've all gone through a lot of things, but it's really made me and pushed me. If you listen, you can either grow from it or not. Or be learn a little lesson from it. It wasn't easy, but that's my, that's my, the little voice inside me or something. If it's God or whoever it is, it would always why I'm here. Okay. Listen, does that make sense? Yeah. What were those voices telling you when you were young? I, oh, I never felt good enough. And I think a a lot of us don't, um, I never felt attractive or I just didn't feel I, I would join all these sports. I was telling my girlfriend Maria the other day, I would join all these sports in junior high and I did well just so I can walk the stage and get an award I think to be seen and I realized that later like I would join badminton volleyball even though I enjoyed the sport but it was my way of being seen to get a a reward and um I was like okay that was pretty cool at a young age to kind of be my own my own kind of um survival mode kind of it was my own survival mode to do that what was the patterns in your life during that time? What did you like doing? Um, So, so going to so many schools, like 16 to 17 different schools pulled out in and out. Uh, I grew up, I was born in Canada, 
lived in Italy a part of my elementary years and junior high years, which were was the best thing my dad ever did education wise because being in living in Italy and having another culture, uh, learning another language was great. But and living poor and living with money was a gift. Um, you know, food hamper to our house. My mom would leave my dad, um, social assistance. Um, it, it gives you a different perspective and valuing a dollar. Um, I moved out of my house at 13. Um, it, yeah, it's young. And when I look at my nieces that are my ages now, like that age, I'm like, whoa, I didn't realize how young I was. Till when I, I'm with my nieces, I'm like, holy. Um, but it taught me a lot of um with different people i i could talk to anybody a uh, kind of a chameleon and and see them for who they are not the titles that they are that was the biggest gift of all that kind of happening it wasn't a bad thing like yeah it was hard it wasn't easy but i stayed in school um i would wake up and go to school my mom was just going through her own emotional she you know she went through a lot um my parents just, just didn't get along probably culturally different not sure, but um, it taught me how to really look at someone's soul at a young age, like not titles, this person's a doctor, this person's a lawyer, which is great. I respect everybody, but even the guy sweeping the floor is worthy and is amazing and makes the world go round. So I, I was, I learned that at a very young age because of my, you know, just being open and seeing, you know, and living with money and without money, kind of, kind of see the, where the view, different views and acceptance and what's really important in life. It kind of makes you balance, balances me. It balanced me in that way. Mm. It took a lot of uh, pain to, but to realize that. And what are the messages that are being sent to you now? Well, it's, it, it's super hard. I've been, I've been asked to do a lot of po podcasts lately. Um, thank you for asking me. But the old Carmelina would kind of self-sabotage and not want to be hurt. Or like I was thinking, because my subconscious child, little childhood girl would come up and be like, I would try to stop. Oh, no, and make, make an excuse. Maybe I'm busy or this. But now I'm open to it. And I'm like, I'm worthy. I deserve to be heard. And I deserve to, you know, pass my message but before I would make excuses and like I try to like cancel it but the old karm because maybe it's my not feeling worthy or why would they want to hear me but because of all the healing I'm like no I have something to say and I want to spread the word but it took so much you know I'm in my 40s and it took me a long time to realize that <laughs> you know to, to be you know to believe in myself what do you wish you heard from your, your parents back then? I wish I was, I heard, um, I see you, I hear you. Um, I'm sure they did hear me and see me, but you know, they're, they're battling their own little childhood ones. Who knows what they're battling? But yeah, like, I see you, I hear you. You mean so much to me. You're important. All those things. So did, did you ever get closure for that? Those ones. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did a lot of work around that. Um, my dad passed away a year and a half ago. And yeah, I, I, I was, I forgave my parents wait a long time ago, because they did the best they could just like in every parent. Um, and, and I felt the first thing I say, even to a cancer patient that comes and speaks to me that they've been first diagnosed is forgive your past heal any resentments that you have. That's the first thing I they ask me. They they want to know, oh, how are the treatments going to be? This, but I said, forgive any hate or resentment that means you have. Do you heal right now? Like start healing that right now. That was the first thing I said. So yeah, I have closure. Like I I spent my sisters and I took care of my father. Um, it was a quick um, passing, a couple months, and that was closure. But I also was very I still kept in touch with him and I had a relationship with my dad and I, my mom, I have, I have a relationship and I also have boundaries. <laughs> like <laughs> what are those boundaries? You know, if I can't, cause I would always, I was almost always the one, uh, maybe my sisters can relate though. 
just jumping, always there, not really making time for myself, um, not, not saying no. Now I create time for me and no one, no is no. And, you know, just have some time for calm. If I can't do something, taking on um, other people's hurt or guilt, guilt trips. I, I don't, you know, I try not to do that. <laughs> yeah. So taking out time for calm, what does that entail? So that's a big one in my life right now. It's a big one for since cancer. I uh, have to have my my uh, workout as in even yoga, any kind of body physical activity. I have a trainer twice a week or just yoga and eating healthy. Um, I was supposed to take medication for 10 years. It's a hormone um, medication called tamoxifen. Um, intuitively, and I'm not saying no one, you know, it's, this is my journey, so I don't talk for other cancer patients. Um, I intuitively didn't want to take this medication. So I did a whole lifestyle change as in, I wasn't a big drinker, you know, I partied back in the day, but I don't drink at all because it raises estrogen because my cancer was estrogen, high levels of estrogen. So staying calm. So my cortisol levels are um, low because I would take a lot of, uh, I'm a very big feeler. So I would take a lot of like stress. I care if my, someone's hurting or if my brother or sister's not doing well, I want to help them or my mom. So now I'm just like, okay, like I come first, not in a selfish way, but in a selfish way. Like I, I have to take care of me. I don't want to get ever have cancer return in my life. And I know cancer um, was because of stress. I really, really feel that this emotional suppressing, you know, unresolved issues, um, not letting go of certain things. So I really, really time with my good friends. I only have good vibes around me. I have really good girlfriends. Um, just keeping that, that sane and stability uh, not overworking, working a lot, but also taking time to enjoy life. Because I know how it was all taken quickly from me when I had to t- do treatments for the whole year. And it took me so long to become feel normal. After all that it took me a long time. I still have uh, brain f- fog as in I've had such a bad memory, like I'll know somebody, but I won't remember their name. Sometimes it's just I'm trying to think of the word or words. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But so what? just basically, yeah, taking that time for me. What did cancer take away from you, Carolina? It took away my hair, but it grew back. (laughs) Cancer took away the old shit. Cancer took away. It was, I'm going to say this because I, I, this is, I say this to a lot of, like I said, newly diagnosed cancer patients. Um, I'm going to say this to you. You're going to, you're going to remember this when you're healed or because I'm going to say, I'm, I am one of the, you know, not, not all treatments work for breast cancer patients or all cancers. Right. So I'm very, very grateful that I'm sitting here talking to you because we know people, you know, sometimes it doesn't work, yeah. but what it took for me is the old harm stuff that I was maybe carrying little backpack of shit that I didn't need. And I didn't know I had. So it took that away. Um, And it left me more. I'm, I try to live life to like, I, 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 I like it's, I try to live life, like take it, take it as I come. Like if I want to do something, I do it. And if I catch my going, set myself going back to old patterns, I change that right away. Like, it's just that, you know, fear, trying to overcome the fear or taking risks, I check myself. <laughs> so it took away old, old um, patterns I didn't like that I didn't know that were there. So it took away the old patterns. What did it give you? Give me, it gave me strength. It gave me um, more grounding in my feet of life. Like I can go outside and walk and smell see the sunshine, um, smell the breeze. Like it can, that could have been taken in a second. Like I remember walking and not being able to walk 15 minutes cause out of breath because of treatments. Um, I'm, a, I'm a very active person. So, so things I wanted to do, I couldn't do the simplest thing, like buttoning up my shirt when my fingers were numb and my nails would kind of fall off because of 
all the treatment garbage is killing all your, you know, molecules and all that kind of thing. So the little things now I don't, I'm not complaining about, Oh, my hair, like shave my hair off. Like I could shave my hair off tomorrow or in the hour, you know, I don't hold on to certain, certain things that I held on to before. I, I'm more like flow. There's worse things in life. There's someone going through something worse, but I don't ignore, like, I don't minimize myself while doing that. Like, okay, there's worse. I still acknowledge if I'm feeling a certain way, but I get back to okay, harm, keep going. And this new perspective of yours, how has it helped you in your day to day? This new perspective, um, I've always been a very compassionate, um, sensitive person, um, especially with the work I do today. I don't know if you know, Savio, I do areola restoration, hyper 3D nipple tattooing on cancer patients, and even breast cancer reconstruction gone wrong, even men um, that lost their, their nipples. Um, I feel I can relate to I didn't get my nipple um, taken off. Thank God they almost did, but I can relate to their journey as in what they've gone through and really make them feel comfortable. Um, Cause I went through treatment. I know how scary it is when a doctor says um, we may have to take your breasts off when giving that option or your nipple might, you might lose your, lose your nipple. So I'm a, I'm a great listener. Now I found before I would listen, but maybe not as well. That's what it really brought, gave me too. I sit back and listen better. It, it, it made me really be the third person, like and looking into a combo. Like I would actually listen and not miss what the person's saying. Before I, maybe I was a little bit out of like thinking hyper. Don't get me wrong. I'm still hyper. I love dancing, but <laughs> But I am a good listener now. I wasn't before. Yeah. Being a good listener, is the universe trying to tell you something? Right yes. Now? Yes. Be calm. Be quiet. Be still. Continue being still. Being still is when the message comes. I feel the message comes to me. Um, it's just a feeling, an intuition feeling or a, just something I feel. I listen, I feel listening to like my body, my breast cancer. Um, I found on my own, not on my breast. I was on my yearly trip to Europe under my left arm. It didn't hurt. It was just a pulsating that was very slight. Like, and I'm like, well, that's weird. But if I didn't listen, it could have spread quickly to my body because the lymph nodes, it wasn't my lymph nodes. It was crazy. But I listened. And I was in Milan with my friend, Tony. I remember he's getting out of the shower. He's been my friend since high school. And I'm like, Tony, oh my God, like under my arm. I hope it's not breast cancer. I didn't even know the correlation, but I said that out loud. So when I back, got back to Canada, I went to the doctors. Oh no, don't worry. Your lymph nodes, your lymph nodes swell. Um, it happens sometimes. It's nothing. But I went and it happened to be breast cancer that spread from my breast into my lymph nodes. So listening. If I didn't listen, you know, those little things, uh, signs, I don't know. And you know what, Wh whatever your God is, like, I don't know. Um, I, when I say God, I mean, whatever anyone's God is, it could be the sun or it could be Allah. It could be Hindu God. I'm here because of that too. Not just because of my, I believe my own, um, you know, obviously the healthy things I do and the way I, my perspective and spreading love. I'm not here for myself. I'm here to spread the message and love and, and people to remember me, what I, what they, how I made them feel, not, not what I gave them. So that's my message. I feel that's why. What's like a step in the right direction so that that message can be amplified and your pattern can be harmonized. So continuously, not just talking, but walking the talk leading by example. So me leading by example is huge for me. Like I'm being the man of my word is huge, everything for me. When I say something, I'm going to do it. Um, I always say this, like 
I can know somebody for 30 years and I can meet someone in, within five minutes and have a same soul connection and maybe, t- you know, tell them, you know, you're, you have a great smile. Making people feel seen is my big thing. Maybe because I didn't feel seen. So I kind of want to pass that. Um, I think that's my gift, making people feel comfortable just because of my own experience, spending a lot of time alone, uh, moving out young, but it kind of gave me that emotional intelligence of seeing that who's hurting, who's sad, who's putting the mask on can, can pr- kind of break through that. When you see yourself in the mirror now, what do you see? <laughs> I'm like, Oh, my dimples are getting a little bit too deep. <laughs> I'm proud of myself, but I would never, ever, I didn't want to look in the mirror before I can look and say, okay, I accomplished what I said I would. Um, I didn't realize this till my friends said, Carm, do you remember, do you remember when you wanted to do this? Um, you brought up the aerial illustration and you're doing it. I'm like, yeah, you're right. Um, so I'm, a, I'm proud of myself now because I feel more solid with myself. Not, I'm still working on a bunch of self-love stuff. But it's there and I, I know the little tools and I know the self-talk and I feel just more solid within me. Before I didn't feel that, I was very iffy, you know, not very, you know, I feel solid with me and with, with what I'm doing. I know why I'm here. I feel like my cancer, my pain brought me to my purpose. Me and my business partner, Casey, always say that, you know, she's had death, grieving, and it brought her to her purpose and we kind of got to can- cancer brought us together. She lost her father for- with cancer. And so we, we have this cancer activism and we are living our pain through purpose together. So that's, I feel like that had to happen for me to fe- get to this point to feeling proud of myself and what I'm giving back and what I can share in any way I can inspire somebody. When you view yourself in the mirror, what are you feeling? I feel, what's the word, what word can I describe? I feel I'm more at peace with myself. I, and I love, I know I obviously like my nice skin, so I still take collagen. (laughs) I love taking my collagen, but I feel more at peace and I accept, I'm accepting of me. I never, I never wanted to look at, like I ran into a friend from junior high and he's like, Carm, you were like, oh, well, the, you know, everyone, you're so pretty. And I'm like, what? I was like, so shocked. I was like, no. I was like, yeah, you're like, but I never felt that. I never felt attractive. And it, it kind of shocked me where, how other perceptions, but how I viewed myself. I know I was, I was a good soul with people and, you know, was friends with a lot of people, but not, never viewed myself as that. I never wanted to it's crazy to look in the mirror. I almost, I, I look at, admire people that can say good things, nice things about themselves. I'm like, wow, that's cool. She can see that. But I, I'm, pe- I'm more at peace with myself, not even the physical part. I'm, I'm proud because I'm, you know, in my late forties and I am taking care of myself. So um, that part I'm good, but it's more of a peace within. That's, I feel more peace within with me. me. Like I'm on my, I'm on my right path right now. Took me a long time. Carmelina, we talked a lot about this idea of pattern and emotions and not feeling, you know, good enough to some degree. What's what's missing in your life right now? What's missing? More risks. I'm a spontaneous person, <clears throat> but I'm gonna, more taking more risks because we have one life, and I I'm very I've always been. I love to travel. I spend all my money on experiences. I love, uh, I love nice things, but I'll have a beautiful bag or shoes for a long time. Cause I'm about classic, um, trending maybe a long time ago, but I'm all about experiences, food. So I want to do more of that, like spending, even though I do it now, I want to do more of that. Just working a lot, but taking that time to, enjoy different cultures which I love meeting different people visiting my family in Europe friends and just experiences going to see beautiful places of nature anywhere and other places but taking risks not being stuck in that um what's the rigidness of 
I'm not a nine to five. I never have been, but like rigidness. And I do like, I do like structure, but not getting stuck in that structure of comfort. As long as I have my, you know, like I have my health stuff and I'm living that, but just get breaking the little structureness, not all of it, but not getting stuck in that. Cause I really feel, I don't know if it's the, um, getting more mature and older, I feel like time just goes quicker. So I feel like I don't want to waste any time on frivolous things, but I want to just live it as much as I can. Music festivals, um, whatever it is. Saying yes more. Even Saying though I'm yes a yes more. person. Saying yes more to things I wouldn't say yes to, maybe. And getting something out of that. Because instead of trying to control oh no, I don't know, make an assumption about what the yes is for, letting go of that, that's what I want to, that's what I want to do. So you want to say yes to things? Yes. Like things that I would say no to that didn't seem interesting, I want to say yes to. So how would you disrupt that pattern, things that you usually say no to, so to things that you want to say yes to? I would be like, okay, I've never tried that. I'm going to say yes because something beautiful can come from that instead of always being in the comfort zone. Oh, I'm a creature of habit. A lot of us are like, I know I have my favorite restaurants I like to eat at because I'm, so I kind of want to break that and try new things. Even though I do, I want to do it more. And if an obstacle or something comes in your way, how, how will you, how would you handle it? I'm be like, fuck off. <laughs> it's an F off. <laughs> and would would it be as simple as that no i would i would make it up solutions make it happen i always try to find solutions when i was younger i didn't think there was solution you didn't think there was solutions? Took, no when i a lot younger so that's my big thing there's solution hmm. and it made me feel like wow i don't know i had that aha moment when i realized that i always felt like no like panic you know but there's solutions. Try to make things happen if I can. So what's that gnawing problem? And what's that beautiful solution for you right now in your life? The gnawing problem. Explain that to me, Savio. Like the problem that sort of eats at you. What, what is that right now in your life? And you're so good at problem solving. So what would be a solution to that? Oh, okay. So right, which that's a great question. Because right now I'm working on some, because of my, my upbringing was so, you know, up and down of living, moving and leaving, living here, moving here, so many places, which was a good thing for me because a positive thing, but it's also negative because sometimes I find myself because of that, I want to stay. So I'll say no, because I don't want to leave, say my city because I'm, I get a little bit freaked out because of that little childhood trauma comes up and I'm working through that right now because I moved around so much. So I'm shaking that up a bit. So that's what I mean. For me, saying yes, doing it more. And not being afraid. Am I are making sense? Yeah. Are there examples yeah. in your life who you emulate? Or is this just Carmelina's philosophy? No, I just, this is just what I've been working on lately, that I realized there's a block and I need to like move that block. So that's my, um, what I've realized in the past few months, get over that fear and just like, just do it. Just do it. Just, just do it. Yeah. And you're smiling like from year to year. <laughs> what does that feeling of just do it give you? Um, sometimes I smile even when I'm, I'm nervous and afraid, but I just do it. I just push myself, pushing the boundaries, pushing yourself, just say yes get over fear. A lot of, a lot of uh, people I find fear stops us, blocks us. And if we can just face our fears and just do it, um, it, it will take us a lot of places. It will open doors that we don't even know exist within ourselves. That's what I realized. So everybody just jump, just jump, <laughs> just jump, just jump in, just jump, <laughs> just jump. All right. On that note, is this a good place for us to transition? Are you complete? Yeah, I feel I feel like I'm 
I'm complete, but I'm still going to be filling myself with beautiful things in the future. So I don't forget that. Wonderful. All right, Carmelina Batari, tell my audience more about you, your work. I know you alluded to a little bit of it. Um, okay. Okay, so hi, guys. Um, so I'll, I'll speak about, I was diagnosed with breast cancer six years ago. Um, I went through all the treatments, chemotherapy, radiation, um, surgery, um, supposed to take the the medication I mentioned, I opted out because I, I intuitively felt like I just didn't want to take this pill, but I'm like, okay, do chemo because it's in your lymph nodes. And it was a gateway to your body. So metastases, which I kind of blocked out at the time and realized later how danger, dangerous it was, which is crazy is I'm the reason I want to talk a bit about this because it would kind of give people an opening to listen to that voice and to stay still sometimes. I, before I got breast cancer, a year before I was reading an article of this work and I was a makeup artist for 20 years. Keep that in mind. I was reading a newspaper clipping and it said, it said, um, it was talking about this guy. I think his name was Aldo in, in rural America in a little town that women were going to get areola restoration, 3D nipples from. And I'm like, I want to do that which is crazy. And literally I was diagnosed a year later with wow. breast cancer. So I know it was like, it was my path, my path to do it. Um, and also when I was giving up, I'd talk to God and be like, Oh, I just can't take this anymore. So it's like, he's like, here's cancer car. What are you going to do now? Yeah. So it's like, he's like, what are you yep. going to do now with this, with this literally? So I really feel that my path and our path is already written so I, by listening to those signs, it has led me to my purpose. Um, like I said, pain to purpose and it's grounded me. And I feel the most grounded feet wise in the ground that I ever have with that. So I was diagnosed, did all the treatments. Um, I had a lumpectomy, almost lost my nipple, but I begged my doctor for a year. Please don't take my nipple off. Please don't take my nipple off. He goes, do you want a mastectomy? I don't want to do that because I already went through chemo and I was just done. Chemotherapy sucks. Um, yep. It's hard. It's not easy. No. Um, yeah. So after that, and it just, I did the course when I could, when my fingers were all healed because in neuropathy, you can't really feel anything. Yep. Same <laughs> so I, yeah. Right. So um, I did the course and now I'm following and doing what I'm supposed to be doing. And I really feel like this is, why? Because it's not just an art um, that's that's just giving one someone an aerial. It is actually closing a chapter to a woman's journey. It's it's an emotional chapter. They almost don't realize the completeness once they have it on. They're like, it's they come with fear. There we work on them because we work in tandem. My business partner and I. She works on one breast. I work on the other, and we switch over. Mm. Um. So their fear, nervous, and bawling of happiness. So I feel like I'm living my path from my pain. And this is what, what I'm supposed to be doing. And I really feel like that I was guided here because I'm I because I understood the assignment. Because <laughs> you understood the assignment. A TikTok <laughs> reference. <laughs> I love it. Which was don't leave anybody um, feeling shitty. Um Forgive your haters, forgive anyone that's hurt you. Um, give them love because they're in pain too. Um, not everyone's going to like you. It's okay. Still give them love because that's what I feel why we're here. And that's why I feel my purpose is. So I love that. Yeah. And I continue doing that. Well, you know, you and I connected because you were so generous in contributing to my interview series, I Survived Cancer. Here is how I did it which then became a book, which launched at the end of February, became a best-selling book in three Congratulations. categories. Congratulations. Thank Congratulations. you. Congratulations. I wanted to ask you in contributing to that, what was, what was, what was it like? To do that, to the interview? I absolutely loved your questions. I love the question. I think if I, if my cancer had a message for me, what would it say? Actually, yeah. I have to like remember it because my memory is bad still. And I said, remember 
you are worthy. If my cancer had a message, you're worthy. You are loved. You deserve the best. Speak your truth and don't hide who you are or what you feel. All of you is accepted. Heal your past. Let go of any resentment and forgive. That's my, that's my um, message from cancer. If I had a message for cancer. What was the reaction from family and friends? Everyone loved that interview. Um, Cause I love the, the questions are amazing. And I got a lot of people cause I posted on my social media and I got a lot of people, randoms that don't know me that said I inspired them cancer diagnosis people that, that were, you know, they said they made them cry and that it also inspired them and pushed them in a positive way. So that's why I like doing these interviews. That's why I like doing podcasts um, because that, because of that. So I got a lot of people saying it was very inspiring and it really helped me. Some of, some of my health journey tips that I wrote there, you know, I'm not a doctor and I don't claim to be, I'm not a, this is what helped me in my journey. And a lot of people, you know, I'd like to do, I did, you know, I believe in science, but I also believe in alternative and I, you know, so I mix the two. Someone listening to this podcast who just got diagnosed or whose family member or friend just got diagnosed, what would you say to them? I would say what I said earlier, you got this, please heal any resentments, any pain, any childhood wounds, anything ASAP and start your healing now. Cause I feel like emotional, like the cliche mind, body, and soul, it's all connected. Mind is connected to our body and disease, like our thoughts, we create disease in our own body, how we handle things, um, anxiety, our body d- basically goes acidic and the toxicity turns acidic. I really believe that. Healing, forgive, resentments, let go of any pain. Someone hurt you, forgive them. doesn't mean you have to be best friends with them. Start the healing right, right at that moment. That's the first thing I say. You know, in your work, everything's focused on the physical body to some degree, right? The, you know, reconstruction and also the, the body art. And it, it's interesting to me because if you read throughout history, especially in a civilization like ancient Egypt, for example, mm-hmm. they would do a lot of stuff to adorn their physical bodies, a lot of symbolism, a lot of ritual. What have you found to be inspiring in the work that you do? What's really inspiring is when we add to so all the aerial, each person, their areola and nipple is custom mixed colors. Wow. So Casey and I, it's not a um, template. So each nipple and color is custom to each individual. So that's the most important. We hand draw everything. So what comes to life is when we add that color to the areola and they have, we're not even finished, the emotion and tears start coming. Because something wasn't gone. And as a woman, you know, breastfeeding, um, even our, my, you have a bra on or your shirt covering your breast, it's for us. Um, so getting out of the shower and that woman sees her areola nipples color there, it's, it's, game, it's a game changer. Like I get women messaging us and they're like, oh my God, I got out of the shower. And I look, I kept getting like moving, leaving the mirror going back, leaving the mirror going back. Some women have waited a long time because they were afraid they they didn't think they didn't really understand the healing aspect of this procedure how healing it is they go through everything um chemotherapy radiation um so many surgeries sometimes and they kind of leave this last because they're tired that this is basically the bow on the on the present the cherry on the cake it's 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 completeness of that it's almost closing that chapter of the book that they've gone through that one chapter. It's actually very, we, I do a reveal, me and Casey do a reveal video. So you won't let them see their breasts, their areolas. And we walk them to a mirror. That is our favorite thing to do because their eyes are like, you see the motion, you see everything they've gone through, go through because eyes tell you everything and the motion, everything crying is just, everything is there. And they're like in shock. Cause it's like, sometimes the doctor can create a knack a nipple there for them sometimes they can't so we're working on a flat surface and creating that dimension and depth that you know with with our colors and all that 
So it's super healing. It's not just physical. It's very emotional healing. Yeah. It really brings me to the point of, you know, I've been a long time seeker of, of truth in general. And a lot of the work is always do the work inside, do the work inside, do the work inside, then you'll feel great outside. And that is true. That is a great, massive truth. But there's another mm-hmm. truth. And the truth is sometimes what you physically see affects how you feel. And I just love the work that you do in giving people that. You know, I've told a friend, I said, my cancer was stage three. It was non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. It was a blood cancer, but mm-hmm. I didn't lose any body parts. I mean, I went through chemo. I went through it all. Mm-hmm. I was stage three. And even, <laughs> even, even in my book, I mean, people lost their colon, people lost their stomach, people lost their throat. I mean, there's a lot of stuff happened to these mm-hmm. cancer survivors. Mm-hmm. And I just wanted to ask you from someone who's faced such an ultimate devastating and now allowing people to transform, mm-hmm. what would you like to say to someone who's just really self-conscious about what cancer has done to them? I We had a patient recently and she was super young in her 20s and she hasn't let her husband see her breasts since she's been gone through this. It's been three years. She messaged us and said, I'm maybe going to let my husband see my breasts for the first time. Wow. It really like, and she's gorgeous, young, you know, not even 30. I would say, look inside, let go of fear, you're beautiful. But if that made me just having her say that to us, she sends a message, like she bawled, they've been together for years, like, there's no shyness there, but she did not want him to see her breath. So look inside, let go, and just do it. <laughs> look inside, let go, and just do it. Yeah. I love that. Well, Carmelina, please tell my audience more about where they can find you online and, and your work. Yeah. Yes, you can find me on my I have a, a website, carmelinabakari.com. I also have Instagram handle Carmelina Bakari. Please check out my work. Please come say hi, add me. I'd love to follow you as well. And yeah, sending you all good vibes. And Samuel, thank you. Sure, absolutely. Can you do me a favor and spell your name? Um, yes. Just in case someone's just listening and not writing. Yes. So I'll say my name again. I know I speak fast. It's probably from speaking Italian, uh, my second language. Carmelina, C A R M E L I N A, Bacari, B A C C A R I. So it's my Instagram handle is Bacar- Carmelina Bacari, and my website is carmelinabacari.com. This was so delightful. Thank you so much, Carmelina. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you, Savio. Take care. I really hope you enjoyed listening to today's podcast episode of The Human We Saw. If you feel that others may enjoy this episode as well, please share socially at The Human Resolve. You can also visit my website, thehumanresolve.com, where I offer one-on-one coaching sessions, a subscription to my weekly newsletter where I probe into the secrets from living smarter to feeding your three brains, and my author website, isurvivedcancer.co, where you can purchase my number one best-selling book, I Survived Cancer and Here's How I Did It, 35 Cancer Survivors Share Their Journey, and view the book trailer, including excerpts from the book. If you could also help me out and give me a review and rating on this podcast platform, because I do care what you have to say, I would really appreciate it. Now, get out there, my friends, and get busy living.